ओम शांति इन द मुरली टुडे बाबा इज सेइंग दैट वी सोल्स हु हैड डिवाइन इंटेलेक्ट्स now have stone intellects and baba is changing those stone intellects to divine intellects again and a very simple way of understanding what a stone intellect is a uh, an intellect a buddhi which is filled with material consciousness consciousness of matter is a stone intellect and a divine intellect is an intellect which is filled with spiritual consciousness now let's understand these two things so you see that uh all our buddhi was filled with before we came to baba was this material world and we wanted to find physical material solutions to every problem in the world yes so and i i have even you know in practices which are which are deemed to be spiritual but which are not actually spiritual because until and unless the spiritual father comes and gives us the knowledge nothing is spiritual so even in i have seen that even when there is this thing that gurus and sadhus do so um i remember when i was young um whenever i did not feel well then my mother would take this um chili red chili and then you know she will just do something all around me and then burn it so and then she would say that nazar utar gayi so whatever bad omens were trying to you know harm you they are gone <laughs> <laughs> so that was something that we used to do and then i heard similar practices that sadhus and gurus also teach which is you know uh, the fire bath or the uh, you know mud bath and they would say that if you want to purge yourself or you want to get rid of whatever bad omens are there in and around you then everybody takes a water bath but then they will talk about a fire bath and a mud bath and all those things and then these things are have become more of a fashion these days and people go and do that and then it is supposed to clean you and cleanse your soul or i don't know what and then baba says this is the material consciousness with which we are living so you know you somewhere you believe that you are made of matter and you are this body and this this five elements of nature they make your body and that is all there is to your existence and then every problem that you are facing is has a physical solution a material solution yes so because you don't understand that there is something outside this material world which is the problem and also the solution so baba says you had become stone intellects and then you were trying to figure out physical solutions for every problem but now you understand that uh, i have given you a divine intellect and what is a divine intellect so a divine intellect is a, a an intellect which is filled with spiritual consciousness so you have the knowledge of the soul the supreme soul the drama that's what makes your intellect divine 
and you your knowledge is different from the knowledge of the people who are in material consciousness yes then your remembrance is different from what other people around you are remembering all the time and then your dharana or what you hold in your life as a virtue or your aim and objective and other stuff that also starts changing because of this divine intellect so your knowledge your understanding of what's going on your remembrance your dharana everything starts changing when you have a divine intellect yes and then you start looking at things differently and you understand that the problem is not what you think it is and the solution is not material it it doesn't come from the physical world so you see that uh these days people are very happy that we have come up with a vaccine and then you see material consciousness how it works is there was a virus and it was a problem and now there is a vaccine so we can deal with the virus so now the problem is over so people think like this so now we there was a virus and there was no vaccine so there was a problem now there is a virus there is a vaccine so there is no problem but the thing is does the problem end there <laughs> what about what the virus is trying to teach us okay so this is how material consciousness works we think the problem is physical the solution is physical and then we don't look at what is actually the problem yes and then baba tells us that the problem is not the virus and the solution is not the vaccine the problem is the five vices and every other problem is because of the five vices yes whether it whether it looks like a physical problem whether it looks like a problem in relationships whether it looks like a problem with your finances whether it looks like a problem of war whether it looks like a problem of disease it it all has its roots in five vices yes so there is body consciousness there is lust ego anger attachment greed fear insecurity laziness selfishness and these are the root causes which are afflicting the human soul and baba says you have to pay attention to that and until and unless that is taken care of then these other things you will feel like they have temporarily you know been addressed and they've been taken care of but then something else will come up yes so this whole this whole issue about uh why we are sorrowful if you approach it in a very material way so this person is the cause this virus is the cause and this five elements is the cause or you say that the planetary position is the cause sometimes you know people will say that your stars are not right yes and then other people will tell you the vastu at your house is not okay <laughs> and then we we are always taught to not look inside always look outside you know the problem is always outside they will tell you even if you there is no person who is responsible or there is no 
nothing in the five elements that's responsible then probably it's the position of your stars that's responsible or maybe your bathroom is not in the right place or maybe your kitchen is not in the right place so you just you know break that and you <laughs> you reorganize the structure of the house and then things will be okay but baba says it's not the position of those stars it's the position of you the star that's not okay and baba says that it's not just limited to what's happening in your you know in your life in that limited um drama of your life but in fact baba in the murli today says something very interesting he says that people say when the stars are aligned in a certain way then they, it is the omen of jupiter brihaspati ki dasha and then they will say if the stars are in a certain other arrangement then it is the omen of venus or shukra ki dasha and then they would say that if the stars are in another position it is rahu ki dasha now baba says it's not about the position of those stars you think those stars are affecting your life and your circumstances and people also say you know um, this high tide low tide and they affect moods and they affect health and so we have started uh, we have started accruing all our behaviors all our predicaments to to the arrangement of these five elements of nature and to the position of external stars and we think that they are responsible for what's going on in my life now today baba makes a very big revelation and baba says a first thing those stars are not affecting your life they are just elements of nature and you are a soul you are the child of the almighty they are not powerful over you <laughs> so they are not more powerful than you this is first thing you understand and then baba says this whole thing about what alignment or arrangement of stars and how how it is changing the fortune of the earth is about your position so you the brahmin souls you are the most important in this universe and you are the Uh, you understand that you are the most powerful souls in the universe and it is your position your collective position which actually determines the fortune of this earth so baba says when it was the golden age and the silver age then you the stars will uh, were aligned with yourself and you were completely soul conscious and then this whole world was experiencing the omens of jupiter brihaspati ki dasha and then in the silver age it was a little less than jupiter it was the omens of venus and then baba says slowly gradually your you started you know you you got disaligned from your state of soul consciousness and that has brought about this rahu ki dasha on this whole planet and now baba says when you start coming back to your position of soul consciousness and with this divine intellect you start behaving knowledgefully you start remembering baba and you start upholding divine virtues in your practical life then the whole planetary position of this world is going to change okay so you are the ones you are the stars determining the position of this world not those stars so baba 
moves us away from material consciousness and he brings us to spiritual consciousness and what is the difference between primary difference between these two states of consciousness when you are in spiritual consciousness you understand that you rule matter so the way matter is behaving is because of how you are and what you are doing and how you are being and when you are in material consciousness you think that matter rules over you and it is there is something wrong with the five elements which is causing trouble to you and then what happens in in material consciousness you try to take care of the five elements rather than taking care of you and when you take care of them you can take care of them temporarily because it's you the problem and you are still not taken care of so again you become the source of another problem which you again take care of temporarily because you don't realize that the source is not getting taken care of so this is why if you look at this interesting phenomena in the world every day there is a new problem and every second day there is a new solution and then every third day there is a newer problem and every fourth day there is a newer solution and then we celebrate in between and we think that okay we have dealt with it and that problem is gone but we don't reach the root of the problem which is your own inner state and those five vices and baba says until and unless that is taken care of you cannot have a permanent solution so this is all about divine intellect stone intellect and how you change the position of this you know how this whole world is going to change i will tell you one thing there was this girl and Uh, she used to come to baba and she undertook the course she used to study the murli she was a good baba's child and she was a vastu expert so she used to do the vastu for these big projects and buildings and other stuff and then one day i made her sit down and i told her so i want to ask you a question she should said yeah didi ask me i said um, let's take two scenarios one is the vastu of my house is not okay okay so it's is not what facing it should be and other stuff and it's all not right according to how it should be and there is another another sin but my vastu is okay okay i am soul conscious i am in remembrance of baba and everything is fine and then the second scenario is my vastu is not okay and the vastu of the house is okay okay so the house is perfectly you know according to the principles of the vastu and my vastu inside is not okay which is i am not in my vastavikta i am not in my uh, originality <laughs> okay i am not in my spiritual state so which one is better so she laughed and she said didi why are you tricking me like this you know the answer right so in fact the house is of no consequence and it's all your inner state that matters that's true so i said then why don't you tell your customers this thing they are breaking their houses they are breaking their washrooms they are breaking their kitchens and they are trying to sort out the problem which is not even the problem so why do you tell why don't you go and tell them this so she said didi uh, the see it would apparently look like i am a business woman and i it, that's my job and that's how i earn money so probably it looks like i misguide them 
But let me tell you a fact today. When I came to Baba, I became so happy that for some time I even forgot my business, you know, uh, side and and I tried telling some customers that you can actually change your thought about it. Instead of changing the alignment of your house, why don't you change your attitude or your awareness towards the house? And you know what they did? They left me and went to another person who changed the vastu of their house. So, you know, Didi, it's not like if you tell everybody they are going to do these things because just like Baba says, soul consciousness and body consciousness or material consciousness are two different things. Until and unless you are soul conscious, you won't believe in spiritual solutions. You always believe that the problem is material and the solution is material. And when you, and it is a wonder how Baba, the, that is why, you know, Baba is called the bestower of a divine intellect. Because apart from Baba, there is nobody who can actually, you know, so lovingly steer you gradually, slowly from body consciousness to soul consciousness. And it's, it's a very gradual thing. It doesn't happen in one stroke. You cannot, you try telling somebody that the problem is not physical, it's spiritual. They will laugh at you. And you see how Baba, who is the bestower of divine intellect, makes this effort every second and every day, you know, each day he makes this effort and slowly, gradually he steers us in that direction. And then we are, this, this divine intellect is a gift from Baba and in the Avyakt Murlis, I have heard that Baba says that when you come to Baba, you get a gift and that gift is this divine intellect. And I, I didn't understand earlier why Baba says this is a gift. But actually this is a gift. And you cannot become a one with divine intellect without actually taking it as a gift from Baba. Staying in spiritual consciousness, in remembrance and imbibing divine virtues is something only Baba can make you do. And I have seen people in the world who talk about energy and consciousness, but they don't believe in it. I have practically seen people who talk about a lot, talk a lot about energy and consciousness, but when it comes to their own life, they depend on people, places and things. And we, Baba's children, we truly, actually believe in soul consciousness. And we actually have a divine intellect and we know that the solution doesn't lie out there, it lies here and we don't just speak it, we live it. And that's very huge. So there is, I, I have not seen people apart from, you know, Baba's children who would solve a problem with remembrance of Baba. When there is a situation, you go and sit in Baba's remembrance and that solves the problem. This is not the approach that people in the world do. Even if, you know, they preach this, they won't follow this. But we actually follow this, that being knowledgeful in your conduct, being in remembrance of Baba and being with divine virtues in your behavior 
is what will actually solve the whole problem is what you truly and genuinely believe and live by it and i remember there was this um there was this situation where years ago and there was this big program that we had organized and uh, it was organized by our seniors and at that time dadi prakashmani ji was the chief of brahma kumaris and a big stay, a big ground had been booked for that program and then what happened is um after that booking so you know these uh, these grounds that are go- owned by the government even if you have pre booked them and there is an there is an event that the government wants to organize on that very day then they cancel that your booking okay so then we had this whole thing organized and suddenly it was cancelled because this uh, political uh, party or this party in power they wanted to organize a program there and then when it when this message came to dadi ji that it has been cancelled then immediately what dadi said is one or two of you go and see what can be done there and all of you sit in meditation okay so one of one or two of you you go and do the karma in a karam yogi state and others give your contribution of yoga and then when those those people came to pull down our arrangements because part of the arrangements had already been done so they had to be pulled down and then this political uh, program had to be done there so when those party people came they saw that there was the image of deities on the uh, you know uh, it, whatever limited organization had been done about the program that entailed a lot of deity pictures being put up and then they had this idea that if we pull down these images of deities then we will lose our vote bank because people won't like it that you actually sabotaged a spiritual program and then you conducted your program there so they found that it would be inauspicious and then they gave us permission to continue that program and they did their program somewhere else now do you understand how these minds can change when you orient your mind towards baba so baba says in fact problems are not physical and solutions are not physical they are all spiritual in nature and you are the root of every problem it is because of your stage which has become tamo pradhan that this world is going to through rahu ki dasha and when you change that inside by this divine intellect that baba has given us where our consciousness becomes spiritual where our remembrance is that of baba the supreme soul and where our behavior is full of spiritual virtues if you do that then everything else will be taken care of automatically and baba says you don't even have to create satyug the five elements will create satyug for you you just have to come back to your power to your original position and in the murli today baba also underlines the importance of awareness and let me read out the question for you baba says what awareness does the father the lord of the tree give you children of bharat in order to bring about the omens of jupiter so baba says o children of bharat your original eternal deity religion was extremely elevated you were full of all virtues 
16 celestial degrees full. You children of mine, the ocean have become ugly by sitting on the pyre of lust and become eclipsed. I have now come to make you beautiful once again. With this awareness, there will be the omens of Jupiter over you. So Baba says, how does Baba change this Graha Dasha? He changes it by shifting our omens, our awareness. And Baba says, let your awareness not be ordinary. Don't think of yourself as an ordinary human. Start thinking of yourself as the deity full of divine virtues living in the golden age. And when you change your awareness to from ordinary to elevated, then what will follow is an elevated attitude, elevated words and elevated actions. Because awareness determines the attitude, the words and the behavior. So you think as you are, you speak as you are, you see as you are and you do as you are. So when you change your awareness of who you are, then consequently everything else will start changing. And when you start behaving like a deity and you start operating from your divine virtues, then this world will become a place for deities. So Baba says, how does Baba shift everything? By shifting our awareness of who we are, who we belong to, what is our purpose, what is our nature. Baba shifts our awareness of these things. And that's what changes the omens of this world. Okay. And in the blessing today, Baba is talking about unity. And you see, when you go anywhere and you observe a group, how do you know whether they are united or not united? So when you enter a family, when you go to a place for work or you come to Baba's house, what is the indicator for unity? And Baba says, the indicator of unity, you know, everybody would say, no, we are very united. Yes, people say we are all one and we are united. But what is the sign that we are actually one? So Baba says the indicator or the sign of unity is when one person speaks, the other person listens respectfully and accepts it. And you know, in Hindi, there is this very beautiful saying, Ek ne kahi, dusre ne mani, dono brahmagyani. So, if you can listen respectfully, that's a sign of a jnani. So, patient, respectful listening is a sign of a jnani. And when you, when you have a sangathan or you have a group of jnanis, then this one feature should stand out. And especially in the Brahmin family, this one feature should be very visible that each one of us listens respectfully to the other and accepts it. Yes. And you see when there is a, when there is a group and there is this family, spiritual family, then Baba has given a role to everyone. So there is someone who is who has been entrusted with the role of a senior. There is someone who has been entrusted as the, as the role of with the role of a junior. And we have to respect that. Yes. So who has to speak and who has to listen is also very clear. 
okay so when you speak the one you have been entrusted with listens and they accept it and then when you are with your seniors you listen and accept what they say and this is a very beautiful structure and this structure this structure sends out this message that there is a lot of unity and baba says that when there is unity and there is ek mat which is there is not this difference of opinion and there is no conflict of opinion when there is no conflict of opinion then what happens is maya doesn't come and break that group because maya comes through that door of conflict of opinion and i always think about this two things difference of opinion and conflict of opinion difference of opinion will always be there but with mutual respect there'll never be a conflict of opinion and that's the sign of a united group all differences are merged in this patient listening and understanding and acceptance okay om shanti